Hello, how are you? Uh, welcome to another example uh, of timber beam design. So example says timber beams of effective length, four meter spaced at 1.0 meter center to center are bearing on a masonry wall. The beams are to support a suspended timber floor. Design an internal beam for bending, shear, bearing, and deflection using the following data. Uh, we have section beam is 50 millimeter by 250 millimeter. Mass on the wall thickness is 100 millimeter. Impost load, including the self weight, is equals to 2.5 kilonewton per square meter. Grade stress, we have bending 11.0 newton per millimeter square, shear parallel to the grain, 1.2 newton per millimeter square, compression perpendicular to grain, 2.2 newton per millimeter squared. Then assume medium term duration. Um, another assumption permissible deflection is equivalent to 0 0.0. 0, 3 times span, then K7 is equivalent to 300 divided by H power 0 0.11. Now, um, having been given that data, let's go to solution part. Now in solution, we'll try to sketch uh, the arrangement of the beams. So here we have, we have this the internal beam, we'll be designing this the internal beam, then we have one beam outside and another beam, like the internal beam is between other two beams. So this center to center from here, to, from the center of this beam here to the center of the internal or the middle beam is one meter. The same from the center of middle beam to the end of the top beam is one meter. Then uh, we have the beam here now, we take the beam alone. So this beam here, it's here. So you find like it has an effective span of four meter, meaning that the distance from the center of this mason wall here to the center of this mason wall here is four meter because you said effective span is distance between the center of support. So remember this 100 millimeter wall, which is the same as the bearing. So our step will start with the design loading. So design loading, we have been given as 2.5 kilonewton per millimeter square, which is inclusive of imposed load and self-weight. Self-weight is equivalent to dead load. Then now we can calculate uniformly distributed load, which is given by capital W. So this one, we know that force is equivalent to area times pressure. So our uniformly repeated load W will be, now area will be given by span of the beam multiplied by the center to center distance. Then we multiply by the design loading. So which will give us four meter, which is span. I multiply by one, which is center to center distance. Then I multiply by 2.5, which is the design loading. I get a uniformly distributed load of 10, kilonewton. From there, we'll go to grade stress and modulus of elasticity. Now, these one are obtained from table 8 of BS5268. Now, we are, we, we've already been given here that look at this value. We have bending is 11.0, shear parallel to grain 1.2, and compression is 2.2. Now, we'll go to table 8 and look for the class strength of timber, which has a bending of 11.0, shear stress of uh, 1.2 and compression perpendicular to grain of 2.2. So let's go to table eight of BS 52.68. So when you come to this table here, this is our table. Um, So these are our table eight and nine of PS 5268. So from our strength classes here, we look for a section which has a 
bending prior to grain of 11, then compression perpendicular of 2.2, and then shear parallel to grain of 1.2. So when you start with C14, you find that uh, it is 4.1 bending, so it's disqualified. Um, so automatically, uh, you will find that strength class C30, this one here, let me illustrate, strength class C30 here, it has, it has bending of 11.0, it has compression probability to the grain of 2.2. Remember we said we take the lower value when we've not been told if then was prevented from occurring, it has shear parallel to the grain of 1.2. So basically our strength class is C30. That is how we are able to identify it because we have a common value of bending, common value of compression, and a common value of shear parallel to the grain. Now from there, We'll continue and now go to, now we'll proceed and say, now having obtained these, now we can go to modulus of elasticity. Now remember, because beams here, we have several beam, we shall use the E mean, E average. So when we come to our table here, remember I'll move along C30 and modulus of elasticity is here. So I use E mean, E mean meaning E average, which is the value of 12,300 Newton per millimeter squared, which is uh, this one here, 12,300 Newton per millimeter squared. Now let's go to modification factor, which we call K factor. Now, the moisture content factor K2 does not apply. Why? Because this internal beam, meaning internal beam is subjected to um, service class one or service class two. And we said K2 will only apply if the class of timber service class is not in category one or category two. Then we have K3 load duration factor. Remember load duration here, we have been told it, we assume medium duration. So for medium duration, K3 is equivalent to 1.25. Then we have K8Y because the beams are sharing the load. When they say center to center, it means you have several beams carrying the same load. So we'll have a, K, a load sharing factor which has a constant of 1.1. Then we have K7, which is depth factor, is given by 300 over H, or all that power 0 0.11. So remember our beam here, let me take you back. Our beam here is 550 millimeter by 250 millimeter. Now remember in when we say 50 by 250, the first value is breadth, the second one is depth. Depth is the same as height. So the value of H for our beam section here is 250. So I'll come and replace and say now 300 over 250 power 0.11, I get 1.02. So we'll proceed to bending. Now remember bending moment, we said bending moment is moment that comes from applied load, which is M is given by WL over eight, which is our W was 10 times four over eight, I find to be uh, five kilonewton meter. Then we go to permissible bending. Permissible bending, remember is the bending that the timber section can carry. So it will be the value obtained from the table times K3 times K8, which is 11 times 1.25 times 1.1, which is 15.125 Newton per millimeter squared. So we go to moment of resistance or sometimes some book will call it moment capacity, which is okay. Moment capacity means or moment of resistance basically mean what the beam section, what, what moment it can carry without undergoing failure. So it will be given by permissible bending multiplied by the, uh, the section modulus along x-axis, which is zxx. Now remember, this zxx, we can obtain it in two ways. One, we can calculate it or obtain from the table. So to calculate it, you use uh, Zxx be d squared over six. Remember, d and h is the same. Just mean the depth of the section. So now, 
In our case here, we are going to calculate and not to obtain from the table. Why? Because look, our section is 50 by 250. When we come here to standard customary sections given, let me take you through for the sections. So you find that this is geometric properties of so on soft wood. So uh, we don't have, no, from the list, we don't have a section that starts with the 50 by 250. Like now we look at the first value here, the first column is the value of B. So we only have 22, 38, 47, 63, um, 75, 100, 150, and 300. So we don't have a section that starts with the 50. So we will not be able to obtain the section modulus from the table, but instead we'll just calculate it from the values given. So I'll get back here and say, now my ZXX will be equivalent to BD squared over six. Our B is 50 millimeter. Our D is 250. We square it, we divide by six, you'll get it is a, Five five thousand and twenty eight hundred millimeter cube. Then now we can calculate moment of resistance. We now take the permissible bending, which is fifteen point one two five here. We multiply by five twenty thousand eight thirty three. But now we multiply by ten power negative six. This negative six is twelve pass convert from newton millimeter to kilonewton meter so that we have the same unit as the applied moment. So this 10 power negative six is just convert from newton millimeter to kilonewton meter. So you'll find that it is 8.03 kilonewton per meter. Now you'll say, since the moment of resistance is greater than the applied moment, section is satisfactory in regard to bending criteria. What we mean is the section can carry, can support a moment of 8.03 kilonewton meter, but now the applied load only causes a moment of five kilonewton per uh, kilonewton meter. It means the section can carry that applied moment. Then now we go to shear. So shear, we say permissible shear stress. Permissible, now that is ADM means permissible is equivalent to that obtained from the table times K3 times K8, which is 1.2 times 1.25. 1.2 obtained from the table. We are given and we confirm from the table. 1.25 is K3 and 1.1 is K8. You find 1.65 Newton per millimeter square. So maximum shear force, remember this, uh, now maximum shear force here given by F of V is W over two, our W is 10 over two, you find five kilo Newton. Converted to Newton will be five times 10 power three Newton. So maximum shear stress at the neutral axis. Because this is a rectangular section, we say maximum shear stress at the neutral axis. Uh, that one here, this applied is equivalent to three times maximum shear force divided by two times the area. Remember in the previous example, this area obtained from the table. But now because our section is not among the customary section, the area will calculate it manually by just taking breadth times depth. So it will be three over two times our maximum shear force is five times 10 power three Newton divided by, now our area here is just simply 50 times 250, which is 0 0.6 Newton per millimeter squared. Now remember the applied maximum shear stress is 0 0.6 Newton per millimeter square, but permissible, what our section can support is 1.65 Newton per millimeter square. Then we shall conclude beam is adequate in shear because what it can support is, is uh, is one more unit is greater than what it is being subjected. So then we go to bearing. So bearing, we say permissible compression stress perpendicular to grain. That is now permissible. We say ADM is permissible. Is the one obtained from the table, compression perpendicular to the grain from the table, multiply by K3, multiply by K8. This will give us 2.2. This is from the table or what was given. 
times 1.25 times 1.1, you find is 3.025 Newton per millimeter squared. Then I will go to maximum end reaction F is given by W over two, which is our W remember is 10 times 10 power three, like 10 kilonewton, but I can multiply by 10 power three to convert it to Newton, I divide by two. So you find it is five times 10 power three Newton, so remember, all thickness is the same as length of bearing. So all thickness of bearing length is equivalent to 100 millimeter. We've been given that we've been given this data in the equation. So applied compression stress perpendicular to the grain. So applied, it will be the maximum end reaction F divided by breadth of the section times length of bearing, which is five times 10 to the power three newtons. This one here divided by the breadth of our section was 50. Length of bearing, which is thickness of the wall is 100. So you find it is one newton per millimeter squared. Remember, remember the permissible is 3.025, but applied is one newton is one. So just say, because permissible is greater than applied, beam is adequate in bearing. Then you can go to deflection. So in deflection, we say permissible deflection, we are given at the start, it is 0 0.003 times span. Our span is four meter, which is 4,000 millimeter. You get it is 12 millimeter. Remember total deflection is equivalent to deflection due to bending or bending deflection plus shear deflection, deflection due to shear. So deflection due to bending moment is five W L cubed over 384 EI plus 12 WL over five EI. Remember E is uh, EA, E is uh, modulus of elasticity, A is area, and here I is second moment area along X axis. Now remember we said our 50 by 250 millimeter section is not among the customary geometric size property. So we'll have to manually compute its second moment area, but we know I is given by BD cubed over 12. So we replace our B was 50, our D was 250 cubed over 12. So this will be equivalent to 6.51 times 10 power seven millimeters power four. So now if we replace, you find total deflection will be equivalent to five times 10 kilonewton times 10 power three to convert now from kilonewton to newton times L, our length is 4,000 millimeter cube divided by 384 times, remember this E is what the average modulus of elasticity obtained from the table, which was 12,300 times 6.51 times 10 power seven, which is I added on to 12 times 10, which is W times 10 power three to convert W to Newton times 4,000 L divided by five times E, 12,300 times area, area just uh, breadth times depth, which is 50 times 250. So you find that it will be 10.41 plus 0 0.62, giving us 11.03 millimeter. So the permissible is 12 millimeter, but our total is 11.03 millimeter, meaning that the total is less than permissible. So you just say, total is less than permissible. Then you can conclude and say, since all checks are satisfactory, 50 millimeter by 250 millimeter so on, C30 beam is suitable. Thank you. See you in the next video.